Hello, everybody. Uh, this is, uh, as you can tell, the next day uh, somebody came in and I had to stop recording and then head out to some activities, uh, some family stuff. So I want to try to wrap up the retailing chapter, just a couple more PowerPoints, and then uh, I'll be posting some promotional stuff. Hopefully, I'll get to that later today. Uh, I'm doing my lectures in the same sort of bizarre format for the other class I teach. So let me just jump back in. We were on slide number uh, 20, is my memory. Uh, and the, the main thing I want to just take away, when we're talking about wholesalers, the main distinction that you're going to want to try to remember when you're actually out in the working world and you're dealing with this information is that the majority of uh, wholesalers uh, are what's called a merchant wholesaler. And what that means is they take ownership of the property. They're the most numerous type, they make up the highest percentage, and the other other main type of wholesaler are Asian wholesalers. And they don't take ownership and they're more forming kind of a selling function. And uh, they don't take ownership of the property. So if you go to uh, slide number 21, there are various types of merchant wholesalers. Um, and in all of these cases, they're taking ownership of the items that they're helping to distribute the main issue then is uh, basically you're segmenting them by what kind of wholesaling functions they do. Limited function merchants, cash and carry drop shippers, etc., have a more limited scope. Uh, the broad service wholesalers, you can, you're talking about them in terms of really what it is that they're wholesaling. General merchandise do a wide variety of goods, non-perishable items typically. Uh, single line or specialty wholesalers, then you can think about these corresponding to different type of retailers. They're going to be more kind of single line, uh, specializing maybe in uh, some sort of technical knowledge. So we've been talking off and on about Tony and uh, his snowboard, or uh, Jason, and I, I think Jason sells it's, it's snowboarding too, or I can't remember. If I was in class, I could call on them, but obviously I'm not. But where they have this real specialty object that you go to a specialty stop, shop for, there's a decent chance that for those goods, there's especially wholesaler has technical knowledge about what's good or bad, can really talk the lingo and the jargon with the retailers, so they have that expertise and they're bringing extra value to the process um, through this technolo technical knowledge and expertise. There are a variety of uh, limited function wholesalers. There's a, a bunch of real nuanced distinctions between these various limited function wholesalers. The main thing to keep in mind is that they just don't do as much. So drop shippers, for example, take title, but they don't actually handle products. Cash and carry, you have to provide cash. They don't have any sort of credit function. Uh, truck wholesalers specialize in delivering products at a cost, um, and then they stock these in their own trucks. Rack jobbers, is they have weird stuff, hard to handle assortments. Uh, and then the catalog wholesalers sell out of catalogs to small customers. They reach outlying areas. So, for example, if you go to um, uh, an art store in Muncie, they may have uh, some catalog wholesalers where they have catalogs of art goods, specialty goods, that you can buy through the catalog, and, and they kind of reach um, out into areas that may not be reached by those products. Uh, uh, those products aren't actually on shelves. So when you look at Agent gentlemen, moving on to slide number two, they're 22. They're more you serving a selling function. Excuse me. So uh, there are various kinds of middlemen, but what they're all doing is they have some knowledge. They're bringing together buyers and sellers. This is especially important in international markets because uh, there's a lot of expertise that maybe is not there, knowledge about products maybe that's not there, expertise regarding the international trade process, tariffs, taxes, those sort of things. Um, in some cases, there's just an issue of linking buyers and sellers up. They know I want the good, but they're not sure exactly how to get the good. They don't have the relationships, etc. cetera. Uh, so agent middlemen then function, uh, focus on selling. You have manufacturers, agents. They, they sell similar products uh, to several non-competing producers. They earn a commission. These are export and import agents uh, in the case of international trade. Brokers have information that they use to bring buyers and sellers together. It, they're temporary relationships. They usually last only for the deal, uh, and then they move on. And you do have export and import brokers. And then selling agents do the whole marketing job of producers. They have control over pricing, selling, etc. 
and that auction companies are, you've heard of auction companies, you probably don't think of them as middlemen, but that's what the function they're performing. Uh, they speed up the sell. They you know, you've seen auctions uh, on TV, heard about auctions of high-end goods, art goods, things like that. Um, the Internet has allowed for uh, this process to be more ubiquitous. Uh, eBay is an auction middleman. Uh, allows you to allows them uh, to do this process more consumers to participate in. It. In terms of an overview of the rest of the uh, of the chapter and kind of what's going to happen in the future, you know, computers technology is changing the logistics process. That's something that we've touched on and off for the last couple of weeks as we talked about distribution. So they're improving efficiency. Um, they're allowing for the development of more specialized intermediaries as they allow for the more efficient flow of information and more consumers to be involved in this process. Uh, a lot more web-based re retailing and all of this is increasing competition. It's making the, co uh, the market more sophisticated uh, and making it more difficult to compete because there are more and more people involved. So that is it for this chapter. I'm going to stop recording and try to post this online to Blackboard now. Hopefully this two different posts will work and uh, I'll post something about promotions later uh, in the day hopefully. So uh, thanks for your patience with this guys. I'm hoping you're at least getting some modicum of value out of it. Um, and at the very least you should be motivated because we're going to have a quiz uh, over this content. So let me stop recording.